The basketball playoffs are getting so close you can taste them. Men's basketball has sampled victory and they are hungry for more as they remain undefeated on their home court. We'll be bringing you all the juicy details from last week's matchups and what's coming up for FPU. Don't go anywhere because it's all coming up right now on Inside Fresno Pacific Athletics. Thanks for joining us for this week's episode of Inside Fresno Pacific Athletics. I'm your host, Katie Rocca. Yesterday kicked off the grueling four-day Pacific Collegiate Swimming and Diving Conference Championships down in La Mirada. The swim team has been pushing themselves to the limit since August, and the next few days will be the test of both body and mind. With some of Division II's best at the meet, the Sunbirds are out to prove that they belong at the top. Here's a scoop on their endeavors this week in Southern California. I mean, conference in the past has always been our kind of our prep for nationals. So it's going to be different that it's actually our final meet. The competition there is, is, is going to be great. I mean, we have some of the same competition we had at NAI nationals. We, we have Concordia there. We have Cal Baptist there. But we also have UCSD there, which is kind of just the powerhouse of D2. It's kind of going to be a little test run for later years to come and if, see if we can actually hang with them, which I feel that we can. I think we're going to surprise a lot of people there. Josh has been kind of influencing us and he's just been super pumped about it. I think it's going to be a great opportunity to be pushed and to have a good competition. And it's been obviously a huge transition year for everybody, myself included, the swimmers with the D2 stuff, new coaches. There's been a, you know, a lot of work getting to know everybody, but uh, it's coming to that point in the season where it's really rewarding too now that you've established relationships. Uh, people are doing really well and it's just an exciting time. The men's team overall has done has done great. I'm really excited to see what they can do at conference at this next week. I mean, they've trained these guys. I mean, it's been an honor to practice with them, to train with them. So I'm excited to see what they can do. The importance that we put on this meet's changing as we move to Division II. Um, in the past, it's been kind of swim through, and we got NAIA Nationals. Um, obviously, the next couple of years, this year and next year, this is our main championship meet. But even going forward, this meet's going to play a lot bigger role in our season, and it's going to be a lot more important, not only for team placement, how we're doing there, but also for qualifying for Division II NCAAs. From Vegas, from like right now, we're doing like so much better. As a team, we're getting closer, and like even though our team is really small, I know we're going to do really good at like this meet and everything, and score a lot of points. So I think it's going to be a really good conference for us. Michelle Moreno is one of those. Um, it's just grown leaps and bounds this year and is doing really well and make a, be a huge impact on relays at the conference meet as well as uh, in the individual events. You know, we just had a lot of good swimming. We've already had one school record go down this year at midseason, which was really cool. Well, I have some shots at some others uh, this week, so I hope we can knock a few more down. Swimming all those races, just being a four-year senior, um, we've been through this, you know, every single year. It definitely gets tough towards the end of the meet, but we definitely, just with the adrenaline the last day, your team's support, your coach's support, the encouragement, it just all makes it worthwhile and we're able to do it. Even if you're a drop dead sprinter, uh, you know, a meet like this is really an endurance event because you got to be able to get up and swim fast four days in a row, prelims finals for three of those days, and you know, relays and you're required to get it done every time, especially when you have a deeper conference where you have to swim fast in prelims. For all of us, we've been doing this for years, so we've been, we're used to doing these big meets. We know how to like get us mentally prepared. We just have to be smart, eat well, sleep well, and just swim everything smart, and we'll be fine. We train fast you know, pretty much every day, all day, throughout the season, so we've done a really good job throughout the season being consistent throughout meets, even at the UNLV meet, which was a similar three-day prelim final format. You know, Our best session was probably the last session, so I think we... Now it's time for a look back at what happened at home this past week. Here with your highlights is Brandon Tripp. Fresno Pacific looking to rebound after a tough loss to Dixie State on the road. Taking on Azusa Pacific at home, the Sunbirds undefeated at home, looking to stay that way. Early on, and you knew whose night it was going to be. John Taylor gets FPU going in the scoring column with the floater here, and he was just getting warmed up in transition. Taylor this time gets it to Malcolm Griffin for the easy two, and then Matt Samuels dishes it to Ricky Vick in the corner for three. 
Vic finished with eight points, Samuels with seven assists. But B.J. Porter keeping APU in the game with the three ball, nails one here over good defense by the Sunbirds. On the other end, Antonio Credit playing big down low. Gets the bucket and the foul. He finished with a double-double, 13 points, 10 boards. Sunbirds up five, and Porter again, this time in the corner, gets it to go. He finished with 17 points to lead the Cougars. FPU up eight at the half, and then the second, the Sunbirds poured it on. Taylor in transition goes coast to coast with the good body control up and in. Then Taylor on the outlet with the fake behind the back pass freezes the defender and he gets the easy lay and finished with a game high 35 points for the Sunbirds. Then Taylor serving it up for Trevin Clayton with the big alley oop. He also had three assists. Sunbirds cruising this one 93 67. Well, we want to score a ball in the hundreds every game. Like, if that's how we play better defense, by scoring. So if we're pushing it, our defense picks up. So that's basically what we want to do. So we want to play, score about 115, 120 points. Um, my teammates were just looking for me, and I was uh, powering up strong. And then when they would double, double down on me, I would kick it out. So we had a good in-and-out game. What was we were down 18 to 16 at the second media timeout, and we really, I really went at them a little bit and challenged them, you know, to dig deep and start getting some stop, stops and start taking care of the glass. And uh, after that timeout, we, you know, I, I thought we really, really did that. And so I'm really proud of the, the way our guys, you know, closed out the last 30 minutes of the game, you know, doing both the things that we talked about. Fresno Pacific trying to end a two-game losing streak after winning four in a row, taking on Azusa Pacific. And early on, the Cougars find Hannah Kelly down low. She finished with 20 points and nine rebounds before fouling out with just over four minutes to play in the game. Kiara White on the other end gets the Sunbird started on offense. The jumper in the middle of the lane here, she finished with 21 points. And then Callie Klobeck in transition gets the layup for the Sunbirds, who are down by as many as 16 in the first half. One more time in transition, this time Carrie Stefanoff feeds Kiara White ahead of the rest of the defense. And then with 1.8 seconds left, the Sunbirds with one last chance to close to single digits. Kiara White banks the three from half court. That is good, and the Sunbirds go down nine at the half. In the second half, it was all Cougars. Jackson with the jumper here, and Azusa goes on to win big, 74-59. Tonight really for us was just about uh, the fire and the spirit and the aggression that we do or don't come out with at the, at the start of the game. Uh, we have been ending our games with a lot of intensity. Uh, we're getting good things out of defensive game plans as far as our full court pressure. Um, tonight we made a big, uh, a big improvement in finishing our defensive game plan with a rebound and being able to push the pace and get some great things offensively, but we wait too long. The rest of the season still matters. I mean, we're, you know, we've only won four games, and maybe there's not a chance for us to finish such and such um, at such and such number in the conference, but the rest of the games still matter. And, and not only that, but preparing for next season matters. So we have to keep attention to detail, we need to stay focused, and we need to finish as well as Fresno Pacific can. So it's not just about going through the motions and getting through the, the end of a, a long losing season. This does not have to be a losing season if we end improved. FPU baseball home opener, a doubleheader against Cal State Stanislaus, and the Sunbirds looking to stay undefeated on the season after their sweep of San Francisco State. J.D. Sales on the mound in game one, and the junior righty had seven strikeouts on the day. He gave up just one earned run, a sack fly in the first. The sixth was the trouble inning, though. After an error and two walks, Andrew Graves steps up with two outs and loops a single over second base. That will score two and give the Warriors a 3-1 lead. Heading into the eighth, where Devin Lee shoots a single into center, he went one for four in the game, and the Sunbirds have the leadoff man on for Brett Bishop, who gets the sack fly to center, his second RBI of the year. And the Sunbirds are down by just one, but in the ninth, Danny Molieri closes the door as shortstop Steven Moon is caught looking, and the Warriors take game one, three, two. So the Sunbirds now looking to split the day. Game two with Mitchell Scott on the mound. He threw a gem in his first game of the season against San Francisco State, but things got off to a rockier start in this one. First inning and Scott already working in some trouble. Runners on second and third and Colt McLaughlin rips a double down the left field line. McLaughlin's only hit in the game, but he made a count that will bring in two. And Stanislaus on top early again. 
FPU trailing 3-1 in the third, and Kyle Coppin gets a one-base knocker up the middle. That plates Devin Lee, and the Sunbirds pull to within one run. Coppin was one of two Sunbirds to get multiple hits on the day. Then in the sixth inning, more trouble for Scott. As the bases are juiced, nobody's out, but he gets the big strikeout of Matt Chida. It's his sixth of the day. Next batter, Craig Beavers lines one into left field. That will bring home Ferreira. Warriors would extend their lead to 5-2. In the eighth, Sunbirds making a rally with John Kortov doubling into left field here. It brings home Copham and Bishop, and we're back to a one-run game. Kahua Gaspar on to pinch hit, looking to add, but Moliere again shuts the door, gets Gaspar to fly out to left. The Warriors added two more in the ninth in the 7-4 win. You know, we just couldn't get anything going offensively. Um, nine hits in 18 innings isn't, isn't really successful baseball. Um, but I don't think that's going to be typical of our season or our, our team it just happened that way. And sometimes, you know, baseball goes that way. Yeah, uh, I think we learned a lot today. Um, we put ourselves in some situations that we don't want to be in in the future. But fr with that experience, we'll be able to move forward and be stronger from that. I thought we pitched well today. Um, you know, it wasn't perfect. But, but I thought we pitched well, well enough to win, certainly. Uh, we just couldn't create enough offense to get the two wins. We were right there, just, just didn't do it. I thought we did an okay job. And, I mean, game one, you're going to get their best guy, and it's your job to make all the good pitches. And there were just a few situations there where I made, some, I made a bad pitch that cost them. I mean, it comes down to one-run games and Friday games like that. So just got to be better in crunch time, I guess. Tomorrow we've got to regroup. And, you know, we play the same team twice over there on the road. And, and um, you know, we need to step up to the challenge. And... Thanks, Brandon. The Sunbirds rallied from the Friday sweep on Saturday with a sweep of their own as they took two from Cal State Stanislaus Interlock behind brilliant pitching from Ryan Castadio and Wilson Ashford. Fresno Pacific won game one, three to one, and Ashford threw a complete game shutout in a 3-0 seven inning game two. Last Sunday, the men's tennis team completed a perfect weekend in Phoenix at the Grand Canyon Invitational with a huge upset win over number 10, Grand Canyon University. Seniors Kirill Sinitsin and Omrit Sanchez led the way with single victories at the number one and number two spots. Sophomore Stefan Loop and juniors Kyle Rowe and Marco Gabriel also had outstanding performances during the tournament. It wasn't quite so perfect for the women's team, who won their first three matches of the invite before falling in a tough 6-3 loss to number 14 Grand Canyon. A pair of match points slipped by the Sunbirds in doubles play and put them in an early 3-0 hole. The number 16 player in the nation, Marie Bora, won a three-set thriller at number one singles, but the Lopes proved to be too much for FPU. If you're thinking to yourself, hmm, I haven't done the best job of making it out to support my sunbirds, don't get down on yourself because we have plenty of options of sports for you to come to. So grab a snack, the person next to you, and head on out to show your support. The swim team is competing in their last meet of the season down in La Mirada at the Pacific Collegiate Swimming and Diving Conference Championships. Head coach Josh Christensen and the team are looking forward to some incredible swims and possibly a championship title. The track and field team will split this weekend as many Sunbirds will head to Indiana for the NCCAA National Indoor Meet, while others will be at home to take on Point Loma this Saturday. Also on Saturday, basketball will head up north to Hayward to take on Academy of Art. The women's game will start at 1 p.m. and the men will begin at 3 p.m. Next Monday, the 18th, the men's and women's tennis teams will gear up for a home match against Azusa Pacific. The women's game starts at 11.30 a.m. and the men will play at 1.30 p.m. On Tuesday and Wednesday, baseball will look for their first home win of the season when they host Hawaii Hilo in a two-day doubleheader. Tuesday's games begin at 4 p.m. and Wednesday's games start at 1 p.m. Women's tennis is heading up to San Francisco on Thursday to match up against Academy of Art. Doubles play begins at 2 p.m. Friday the 22nd, women's water polo will go after a win at the Sunnyside Aquatic Center against Cal State East Bay at 1 p.m. Remember, you can stay up to date with all the latest news, scores, and highlights for the Sunbirds at fpuathletics.com and on Twitter at FPU Sunbirds. Glad you could join us this week, and we'll see you next time right here on Inside Fresno Pacific Athletics.